Hey class, so some people expressed some confusion about uh, the potential energy and electric potential equations that we dealt with last class, in particular how it applies to problems 13 and 17 on the homework where it talks about potential being zero and infinity, what does that mean? So I wanted to just kind of clarify a few things for us. So yesterday in class we started off by looking at what happens with energy when looking at a uniform electric field. So here we have our uniform electric field and say we wanted to look at two different locations in our electric field that are some distance x apart from one another. We wanted to see how our potential energy might change as we move between those two locations. And so we started with a general definition for a uniform electric field that said the change in potential energy is equal to negative QE times your change in x. And the negative told us that if we're moving in the same direction as our electric field, as we do here from 1 to 2, we're going to have a decrease in potential energy because the E field is really doing work and so your potential energy is decreasing. Just like gravity, uh, if you move down in height, your gravitational potential energy is going to decrease because you're moving in the same direction as the gravitational field, hence the negative sign. Okay, and so that's where we started, but that assumes that you're dealing with a uniform electric field. Okay, and so from here we derive, we added into here this new idea of potential difference. Okay, so what is potential difference? What is voltage? Well, it's used all the time in circuitry, and so we want to understand where it comes from. And so it comes from looking at this idea of potential energy, the ability to do electrical work which is what circuits are all about. And so we set our change in potential then, we're going to define in a new way as being equal to Q multiplied by our change in V. Which raises the question, what is your change in V? Well, in the simple case of having uniform, uh, a simple uniform electric field, so maybe I'll even write this out so we know, in uniform, this, a really beautiful O, uniform E field. What we have is that our delta V, our change in potential, it's potential difference, so it's the difference between two different locations, for example, one and two. Our change in V is going to be defined as negative E multiplied by delta X. And so what we can see is that, once again, if we move in the direction of our E field, we're going to have a decrease in voltage. But the stronger the E field, the stronger the change in voltage, and the larger the distance, the larger the change. But again, that's only for a uniform E field. What if we went over here and said, hey, what about moving between these two points over here? Maybe we'll call these point 0.3 and point 0.4. What happens there? In this case, where we have a point charge, we're going to be experiencing a non-uniform E field. So what do we do in that case? So if there's a non-uniform E field, maybe I'll come over here. So we have non-uniform E field. And so in this case now, we can really start with the same equation that we were just using, right? But instead of having deltas, we're going to be having a change in E field. And so we need to express the same equation in integral form, right? So if we integrate, then what we can do is integrating that same equation, what we get is that our change in voltage becomes equal to negative integral of our E field that's now changing dotted with dS, okay? And so this here is, look at it, I'll go blue and box it up. This is the box-worthy definition of potential difference, all right? This over here is only the special case of a uniform E field and moving in a straight line. This is the general case that's always true. And so you're gonna be using this throughout, and if we plug this in to our change in potential energy, it also gives us a more accurate and specific definition for change of potential energy through a changing electric field or over different distances and whatnot. Okay, so I hope that helps clarify things a little bit with our equations. Um, what do you use in this E field? Well, it totally depends. If you have a point charge, 
we know that E for a point charge, I'll use point, PT for point, is K Q over R squared if we're dealing with a conducting plate. Maybe CP for conducting plate. Remember that was sigma over epsilon naught. If it's non-conducting, it's sigma over 2 epsilon naught. And all the different equations that we spent the last two uh, chapters deriving, we can now use. Okay, so I just want to point out, in the book, it walks you through this derivation. But if you use the equation for an E field for a point, this equation here, if we plug this in, to our voltage potential difference equation, we can derive a general equation for the voltage at a single point. But the weird thing is about finding the voltage at a single point, say we wanted to, you know, I'll make up some new point over here, let's call this point A, that's some distance R away from our charge. If we wanted to figure out the potential, the voltage at that point, well, it's potential difference, right? How do we find the voltage at a single point when we have nothing to compare it to? To do that, what we do, being creative physicists that we are, we say, okay, let's compare it to something, but something where we're so far away that the voltage we know is going to be zero. Let's compare it to way out here at infinity. All right, so if we compare the reference point at infinity, then we can say we know at infinity your V is zero, so we're going to say V final out here at infinity is zero. So our initial V, the V at point A, is going to give us some value. So what we do is we say delta V, where uh, my program's running a little funny, sorry about that. My delta V is equal to negative, we do the integral from this distance R out to infinity of the E field for a point dr. And since they're in the same direction, we know the dot product goes away. So basically, after you do the integral, you work through it, you can see the derivation in the book if you want. But what you find is that the voltage, the potential at a single point, relative to a point charge, around a point charge, comes out to be equal to kq over r, where r is the distance away from the point charge that you're at. So this is an equation that we're going to use. I, we'll probably talk about it in class some more tomorrow, but you do need this for solving problems 13 and 17 on the homework. So I hope that helps and you guys have a good night.